Do you still smell the, the flowers? They smell nice, don't they? Some of them smell nice. We're very grateful for those who, uh, obviously for all that you do to contribute to our beautiful church, and we have a, f- a fund for flowers, so we, we have very nice flowers. But Easter flowers, to me, can be a waste of money because they like last four days and then they die. And then, because I'm trying to be a good steward of our money, we removed some flowers that were dead. And this looked terrible. So I thought, well, let's see if I can bring this back to life. So I took this plant and I fed it. What did I give it? Miracle Grow. <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> I gave it Coke. I put Coke on top. Because I like Coke. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, Coke gives you a little pep up, you know. This didn't pep it up. Actually, I gave it Diet Coke, because we had a bunch of Diet Coke. And who drinks that, you know? So I figured, we'll give this to the plant. And what happened? It really shriveled up. Like, okay, that didn't work. So I'm not a scientist, but I know that, you know, if you're going to try something, maybe you take another plant and you try something else. So... This plant was removed, (laughs) and I fed this. And what did I feed this with? Marianne, you don't know. Neither did I. Water. Water and miracle grow. And what happened? It died. It it looks even worse than the other one. I should have fed this Coke, and I think it would have fared better than water and miracle grow. This thing looks pitiful. There goes half of it. So... I learned a lesson. When something's dying, like that, there's nothing you can do. There's really nothing you can do to bring it back. Now, it'll come back next year. Maybe the one with the Coke will come back. It might come back, but there's really nothing you can do. Like, everything, as we say on Ash Wednesday, remember we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. There, there is... In this life, very, very few things that you can do to rescue something and bring it back to life. And brothers and sisters, the same is true about us. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, but Lazarus died. He's no longer with us. There's very few things that we can do to continue life. But we say Jesus gives us new life. How does he do that? What can he give us? Well, brothers and sisters, he tells us, when he rises from the dead in this week's gospel, he comes back and he sees the apostles for the first time, and he says, peace be with you. And then what does he give them? The Holy Spirit. And then what does the Holy Spirit Through the power of the Holy Spirit, what does he do? I'm sorry? Gives them the power to forgive. Oh, Marianne, you were listening. Gives them the power to forgive sins. The power to forgive sins. That's why he came, and that's what life he gives us that allows us to receive new life. Forgiveness of sins. That's it. And not, that's it. That's it. That is the power. That is what allows us to receive a new life. Forgiveness of sins. That is why on this Sunday, it's called Divine Mercy Sunday. Because the mercy of God is what gives us new life. Without that mercy that we receive, the forgiveness of sins, we can't enter heaven. There is no sin in heaven. God allows us to be with him. He wants us to be with him. He created us to be with him. He opens to us the doors of eternal life, the new life that we can receive that cannot be given to us by anything in this life. We can all be distracted in this life by things that we enjoy. So if we're down, we can all go to things that we enjoy. Okay, I like this food or I like this drink or I like this, uh, this sport or I like this hobby. And they can be wonderful things. 
but they can't give us new life. They can't give us anything. As a matter of fact, some of those things can shorten our lives here. But the one thing that we can receive that can gain us new life is forgiveness of sins. His ocean of mercy that is available to you and to me. And so we celebrate the mercy of God, the mercy that Jesus Christ offers to us by just our asking today. And we call it Divine Mercy Sunday. And we say that because in the second reading, St. Peter said, we might think that our faith, we have, if I ask, why do you have faith? What was, what's the purpose? We might all have different answers. But St. Peter tells us in the second reading that the goal of our faith is the salvation of our souls. It's not to get good things in this life, although we can certainly ask God for them, but it's for this new life that only he can give us and nothing here can give us. That's why we're here this morning. And so we receive this new life by the forgiveness of sins. As I say, when I hold up the chalice, and I say, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. The goal of our faith, the forgiveness of sins. Without it, there is no life after this. So let's take advantage of it, brothers and sisters. And did you notice what Jesus did? He didn't just say, I now forgive you sin." I now forgive everyone's sin because of my resurrection. Of course, that's what it had the power to do. But then he, he handed that power to his disciples so that when they saw people, they could say, you are forgiven. And we're humans. We need to hear it. Just like Thomas needed to see the wounds and he needed to touch them. Jesus knows that we're humans and we need to interact with our God in a way that he gives us. So he gave us the church with which to interact and to hear the words, I forgive you, you are freed. And so brothers and sisters, let's feel the power of that. Let us engage our faith so that we may attain the goal of our faith, which is the salvation of our souls, which is earned by the forgiveness that he freely gives us because he wants to be with us and live with us forever.